good morning uh, today we will be discussing about the the theme of the security analysis which generally always the brokerage firms or the individual investors use for the maximization of their return in the market <clears throat> or in general we can say that the concept of security analysis is always discussed in the area of investment management which talks about the analysis of the various securities and the analysis basically consist of, consists of how generally we take the decision uh, for investment in a particular asset. So, after discussing about the uh, different markets where we do the investment, then also we talked about the risk return aspects. Then finally, also we talked about the some of the issues related to efficiency of the capital market. So, then now today we will discussing about the, the concept of technical analysis, which is one of the oldest approach people use in the market to analyze the individual stock. So, here whenever we talk about the security analysis, the security analysis can be done through two ways. Already in the previous sessions, we uh, discussed little bit about the different market efficiency concepts and all those technical analysis and as well as the concept of fundamental analysis is very much linked with the concept of market efficiency. So, whenever we talk about the fundamental analysis in the beginning or as well as also in the latter phase, uh, we have discussed the issues related to uh, the concept of uh, market and the concept of uh, the top down approach or the bottom up approach. But here, whenever we uh, talk about the technical analysis, uh, we basically use this uh, different techniques or different tools to anal analyze the individual stock or individual securities to take our decision in the market. And the decision already I told that is decision means we generally refer to decision for the investments. And uh, in this context, whenever we refer to the concept of uh, investment decisions, uh, there are two types of things can, uh, is involved in this particular issue. One is related to the buying of this particular asset and another is the selling of the securities uh, in a particular time. So, basically the technical analysis will answer you when you should buy the stock and when you should sell the stock. Uh, so, here today we will discussing, uh, we will be discussing about the different concepts and different uh, theoretical issues and as well as the, the theoretical uh, mechanism about the technical analysis. But then later phase we will be discussing about the different tools or the parameters or the techniques, what we use to uh, always analyze the stocks in the market through this technical analysis part. So, coming back to our analysis or coming back to the theme, what exactly the technical analysis is? Already I, I have told little bit about what basically the technical analysis is, but here basically the technical analysis is nothing but it is the examination of past market data such as prices and the volume of trading which leads to an estimate of future price trends and therefore, an investment decision. It believes that using data from the market itself is a good idea because the market is its own best predictor. What it exactly means? If you refer to our uh, previous discussion about the efficiency of the market, what we have said there that if you say that your market is uh, weakly efficient, then we cannot predict the future price or, or the future return from a particular stock by analyzing the past prices of that particular stock. But here, whenever we analyze this technical analysis or we discuss about the technical analysis, 
what basically always we observe that the technical analysts believe that the stock price itself is reflecting everything about a particular stock. It involves all the news, all those issues and all those pros and cons, advantages, disadvantages about that stock. And therefore, if you analyze this past trend of this particular stock and if you see that how this stock was performing in the previous years, then we can say that what is going to be happened in the future. That means, how this stock is going to perform in the future. So, therefore, we can say in the beginning that the technical analyst does not believe the concept of the weak form of market efficiency. Here, what generally they believe that by analyzing the past prices of a particular stock, we can say about the future of the stock. That means, how this stock is going to perform in the future, that can be judged if you analyze the past returns or past prices of that particular stock. So, therefore, once we are sure about that how this particular stock is going to perform, by analyzing the past data, it helps to take a very unique investment decision uh, in the financial market. So, therefore, always we say that the technical analyst believe that market is not weakly efficient. If you refer to the concept of market efficiency, what we discussed in the previous class. So, then uh, there are certain assumptions. Uh, are involved in this uh, mark uh, whenever we talk about this technical an analysis. Uh, the assumptions are like this, the market value of any good or service is determined solely by interaction of supply and demand. That means, there should not be any kind of external shock which can decide the demand and supply of that particular asset. It is basically the supply of that particular stock by the investor in the market and the demand for that particular stock by the people who wanted to buy that particular stock. So, that is why solely whole process is uh, determined by a market mechanism and all those concepts which talks about the market mechanism, it is basically de determined by the demand and supply situation of that particular security or the particular asset. So, therefore, what we can say here that solely the prices of that stock is determined by the market forces. So, there are certain factors which comes under the supply side and there are certain factors which comes under the demand side and only those factors are responsible for the determination of the stock price in that particular market. And already what I told you that supply and demand are governed by numerous factors both rational and irrational. Uh, then uh, third point is uh, disregarding minor fluctuations, the prices for individual securities and the overall value of the market trend, a uh, market tend to move in trends which persist for appreciable lengths of time. Prevailing trends change in the reaction to shifts in supply and demand relationships and these shifts can be detected in the action of the market you just observe minutely those assumptions which is very critical and as well as very important in the concept of uh, investment management. Why we talk about it is very important or very dynamic or we can say very complex in the context of investment management, there are very huge assumptions and very uh, we can say strong assumptions have been taken by the people who believe in the technical analysis. First point you see already I told you there are certain factors which affect the demand for the stocks and certain factors which supply the uh, which affect the supply of the stocks. But here if you see that uh, we have used this word rational factors and the irrational factors. How to define the rational factors and the irrational factors? There are certain factors which is known, there are certain factors which is already existing in the market and there are certain factors which already we know that this these factors have the impact for determination of the stock prices in a particular normal situation. 
but there are some irrational factors. For example, you say that the market uh, uh, changes because of the irrational behavior of the investor. Maybe we can say the sentiment of the investor which plays the significant role. So, basically whenever we observe there are certain factors which are not systematic, which are not regular, but still those factors play the significant role for the determination of the stock prices in a particular financial market. So, here what you can see that always uh, the technical analyst should analyze those rational and rational factors and what could be those probable rational and irrational factors in a particular market situation. So, it is very important to get all those factors which could have the impact of the stock prices. If you can know those things, then maybe it will be easy to analyze the trends in that particular security and finally, we can judge or we can conclude something about the determination of the stock prices in that particular market. So, finally, what you see that uh, disregarding minor fluctuations, maybe this is because of so and so adjustment cost which is happening in the market every day. The prices for individual securities and the overall value of the market tend to move in trends which persist for appreciable lengths of time, which is very important in this con what basically it means. What the technical analysts believe? that uh, apart from the very minor fluctuations which comes from various sources because of the various adjustment of the flotation cost. If there is certain trend one particular security is following for a certain period of time, then that trend or that behavior should persist for a reasonable period of time or reasonable length of time. That means, what we can say that if we are observing a certain trend, if you say that uh, this is your time and uh, this is your stock price. So, here what they have said that if you after analyzing the data, if you are saying that uh, these are the fluctuations or these are the trends which the particular stock is following. So, these trend increasing trend what we are observing for this particular stock that will persist for a reasonable length of time. That means, what we can say here that immediately for a certain period of time if we observe this particular trend, that particular trend is not going to be changed immediately. That means, it persists. The concept of inertia may work here. That means, immediately that trend is not going to down, that trend may not be flattened. So, that means, what here we can say that basically that trend will be persisting over a period of time. So, if you believe this concept of the persistence in this case or we believe this that that concept of inertia the theory of inertia which can persist we can which can prevail here then basically what we can say in that particular time period this individual stock obviously will go on increasing up to certain time so immediately that impact will not be vanished the impact will not be uh, absent in that particular scenario so, this is a very uh, important assumption uh, what generally uh, this uh, technical analyst have taken. Another assumption what they have taken if you have observed that they have taken that prevailing trends change in the reaction to shifts in supply and demand relationships and these shifts can be detected in the action of the market. You just observe here. Let we have a demand supply situation and here let in a particular time the price of the stock is determined and this is your equilibrium point. And if you observe here that what we can say that for certain things if there is a disequilibrium or there is a shift of the demand curve or the supply curve, then maybe the new equilibrium will be established somewhere else. 
and that time maybe the price will be changed. But here what generally the technical analysts assume? The technical analysts assume that the price this particular whenever we talk about the let uh, uh, we can say uh, let this is your demand curve and uh, this is your supply curve. Here what we have seen that uh, uh, here what we can say that because of so and so rational and irrational factors, if there is a change in situation of the supply curve and demand curve, then your equilibrium point will be shifted and new price will be established. But what basically here we assume that once this demand and supply of the fact situation of the particular stock or the factors which are responsible for the demand situation and the factors which are responsible for the supply situation, if they will be changed obviously in that particular time according to the technical analyst this investor can judge these things immediately or the situation of the investor or the position of the investor in the market will be changed immediately after this change in the demand and supply situation in that particular time. And that means, if immediately the investor can detect that change or immediately if the investor can say that now the demand and supply factor is going to be changed or the demand for the stock or the supply of the stocks is going to be changed, then he can change the action. That means, we can say that market is so efficient in that way that immediately that information will be available to the investor and the investor can adjust this po his position in a market in such a way that he is not going to be the loser in the market. So, that is why it is a very important assumption what they have uh, taken the technical analyst have taken. So, this is the situation what generally will arrive just now I have uh, shown that that what basically here it happens let already what I have said that this is your time and this is your price and if you talk about the this is your time and price, this is time and this is your price, then for example, the price was following this kind of trend and all of a sudden because of the demand supply situation and the change in the demand and supply of the particular stock, the price has gone down. But once the price has gone down, immediately what has happened? For example, this has gone down like this, what is shown already in this graph. What basically here in this point we assume the technical analyst identifies the new trend. That new trend in the sense now it was going like this, now the trend is going like this. So, this new trend can be immediately observed by the technical analyst. And once this new trend can be observed, then obviously in that particular situation what the technical analysts do? The technical analysts change their position in such a way that already they can arrive this the new equilibrium price. That means, there is no time lag to know that one new equilibrium price is going to be formed. Basically, this is your old price because of the demand supply situation, demand for the fact, demand for the stock and the demand uh, supply of the stock. And because of the changes in the factors which affect the demand supply situation and the supply situation, once the new equilibrium price will be determined, in that particular situation, what happens that the technical analyst can adjust or, or we can say immediately detect that particular trend. And once they can detect this particular trend, then they will be helpful, they can decide that how this new equilibrium price can be determined in the market. So, this is basically the technical view of price adjustment to the new information and this new information in the sense what we mean that because of this new information the and the new information source is basically the demand supply situation of that particular stock. If the demand for the stock or the supply of the stock changes because of the certain factors which are responsible for the demand for the stock and the supply of the stocks and that news or the information immediately can be detected by the technical analyst 
and once the technical analyst can detect that particular new information, then he can adjust this price in such a way, he can arrive in the new equilibrium position very short period of time. So, there should not be any kind of time lag and within that time lag some kind of adverse situation can prevail in the market or the investor can lose in the market. So, therefore, what we can say that the technical analysis is so efficient and the technical analyst is uh, so smart to judge this information and once they judge this information they can detect this new equilibrium price and obvious, obviously immediately the next step will be they can arrive this new equilibrium price immediately without any kind of time lag. So, this is your technical analyst uh, view about the uh, information in the market. So, here if you observe there are certain advantages which are related to the technical analysis which is already we talked about the concept of technical analysis. It is basically nothing but that whenever we use uh, the different uh, variables related to the stocks like the trade uh, trading volumes or the like prices and by analyzing the past trends or past analysis of these prices and the trading volume, we can say that how this particular stock is going to behave in the future. So, the advantages of uh, the technical analysis is basically it is not heavily dependent on financial accounting statements. It is a very means we can say very interesting kind of advantages what we can say. Why it is very interesting? Because there are certain problems always we face whenever we talk about the different accounting statements. Maybe there are lack of information needed by the security analyst. Accounting standards allow firms to select reporting procedures resulting in the difficulty comparing statements from the two firms. Non-quantifiable factors do not show off in the financial statements. Very interesting, come back to the discussion of uh, the accounting statements. There are certain factors which cannot be reflected by the accounting statements. Already I think in the beginning of the session or beginning of this particular course, I also talked about that thing. There are certain factors, for example, the intangible factors, the managerial liability, the opinion about the company or the brand name of the company or the we can say the perception of the people about the company. These are also the significant factors which can play the determination of the stock return of that particular company, but that cannot be reflected in accounting statement. Maybe that is reflected in the stock price, but it is very diffi difficult to uh, accommodate those things in the accounting statement of that particular company. So, if you analyze this accounting statement of the particular company or the balance sheet of the particular company, we may not analyze clearly about the actual performance of the particular company in that particular time or we cannot say that if the accounting statement looks like this, maybe the particular company is going to perform like this in the future. Therefore, there are certain limitations which are involved in the accounting statements of the particular company. Then what is the other thing? Other thing is already said that from company to company, from period to period, from country to country, this accounting standard changes. If the accounting standard, uh, standard changes in the sense what I refer that the reporting system, how this particular statement should be reported, that particular format also changes. So, if those rules, regulation, formatting, all those things will be varied from place to place or period to period, then what will happen that comparison of those analysis for a certain period of time. And by analyzing this particular trend, if you can predict or forecast something about the future, which is quite difficult by analyzing the accounting statement. The another thing is, whenever we talk about the factors like uh, uh, subjective factors, already I told the psychological factor, the investor sentiment and etcetera, that cannot be also reflected in the accounting statement, but that has a lot of implication for the determination of the stock prices. So, here what I say, what we can say that uh, whenever we use accounting statements to analyze about the company or to 
predict about the company for the future, maybe it uh, leads to certain problems because of lack of information or maybe the limitation because of the limitations of this accounting statements whatever we have. But here what we do in the technical analysis we do not do anything, we only use the stock return data or the stock price data or the trading volume data and we analyze the stock price data or the trading volume data and accordingly we can say that how this particular stock is going to perform in the future. So, therefore, what in this context we can say that uh, may be it has the advantage over the uh, particular uh, analysis what uh, we do by using the accounting standards of or accounting statements of the particular company. Another advantage also whatever we have that uh, the fundamental analyst must process new information and quickly determine a new intrinsic value, but technical analyst merely has to recognize a movement to a new equilibrium. Uh, what here we see that uh, whenever we talk about the fundamental analysis, what basically already I told you that the fundamental analysis consists of uh, the so many steps. First we do this uh, economic analysis, then industry analysis, then company analysis, etcetera, etcetera. And by doing those kind of analysis, we generally determine this intrinsic value of this particular stock. And first of all, it is very cumbersome matter to analyze everything. And after analyzing everything, we may not say that always that kind of situation will be prevailed for a period of time. For example, the macroeconomic situation may change, maybe the demand for the industry will be changed or we can say the company profile may be changed because of so and so factors. So, that time what you can say it is quite difficult, quite cumbersome if you do one by one uh, fundamental analysis for all the companies before taking the investment decision in the market. But those kind of analysis you do not have to do if you rely on the technical analysis, only you have to use the stock price data or you have to use the trading volume data to conclude whether we should invest in that particular stock or we should not invest in that particular stock. Whether we should invest or not invest that basically determined by the fluctuation in the prices or the trading volume. So, we should not bother about the other parameters which are involved in this particular process. It is because already we have assumed all those parameters impact is already reflected in the stock price itself. So, individually we do not have to analyze those things again and again to know whether we should invest in this particular company or not or not. So, that is why what generally we can say that the technicians trade when a move to an equilibrium is underway, but a fundamental analyst finds undervalued securities that may not adjust their prices as quickly. Here what we do, technical analysis whenever we use or the technical analyst can get this information so quickly, that is why the price is adjusted immediately and we can arrive in a new equilibrium position. But whenever we talk about the fundamental analyst, what generally they do? They calculate this intrinsic value of the stock and once they have calculated the intrinsic value of the stock, I hope you know from the equity valuation, what basically the intrinsic value of the stock, it is basically the we can calculate using this uh, cash flow and as well as the discount rate. So, once we have the intrinsic value of the stock and we have the actual value what is there existing in the market about that stock, we call it the market price. Then by comparing between the two, they can say which particular stock is undervalued or which stock is overvalued. And once you have identified the undervaluation and the overvaluation, accordingly you can take your decision in the market whether you should buy the stock or you should sell the stock or whether you want to really invest in that particular stock or not. But in this context, whenever you talk about the technical analysis, we do not have to do that. We do not have to calculate this uh, intrinsic value of the stock or we do not want to know which value, which particular stock value is undervalued and which is overvalued. So, without analyzing the undervaluation and overvaluation concept, so here what generally we do, always we use this concept of uh, price trend, how this price is basically changing. If the price is changing in a certain direction and this particular change in price follows a certain trend, then we can say we should buy the stock. If it follows a certain trend, we can go for the 
selling the stock. Whether you can buy or sell that basically the price trend or the trading volume will answer you or will say you. We do not have to see that whether the particular stock is overvalued or the particular stock is undervalued. So, this is basically what we can say the concept of uh, uh, or we can say the advantages of technical analysis over the fundamental analysis. And with this certain advantages, we have certain disadvantages also. Which are those disadvantages or we can say the challenges, which are those challenges? The challenges are like this. The challenges are basically the assumptions of technical analysis. There are a lot of unrealistic or we can say this uh, very, uh, we can say that uh, uh, the assumptions what we have taken for the technical analysis is may not be accepted by a certain economist or the financial experts. Why that particular problem arises? Because this empirical test of efficient market hypothesis so that prices do not move in trends. That means, the whenever we test this efficient market hypothesis, what here we judge there, most of the markets are weakly efficient. If you believe in this concept, the markets are weakly efficient, what does it mean? That means, the analysis of the past cannot predict about the future or if you analyze the past prices of this particular security or particular stock, you cannot say what is going to happen in the future for that particular stock. But here, the whole technical analysis believes in that philosophy. The whole technical analysis talks about how this particular stock is going to perform in the future that we can judge only from the analyzing the past values. So, if that is so, that means we are discarding the concept of market efficiency in that context. If you do not believe this concept of market efficiency, then the technical analysis view can be accepted in the investment decision process. That is why in the assumption what we have taken that the, the price of, of, of that security or the price of that particular asset or prices of that particular stock will reflect everything. And if it is, ref, it is reflecting everything and this particular stock does not follow a particular trend, then it is very difficult to use the technical analysis in a market where the market is so weakly efficient. So, therefore, what we can say here, it is quite difficult. If you assume that your market is weakly efficient, <coughs> it is very difficult to say that whether the technical analysis view can be accepted in the financial market or not. Then another thing is uh, there are some trading rules what we follow in the technical analysis. They are also there are a lot of challenges uh, behind that and the challenges are like this. The past may not be repeated. Patterns may become self-fulfilling prophecies. A successful rule will gain followers and become less successful. Rules require a great deal of subjective judgment. Here, if you see this technical trading rules, what we have observed here, most of the times the past may not be repeated because of so and so reasons, because of some macroeconomic factors, because of the political situations, maybe because of the situations like uh, change in uh, the investors mood. So, the past may not be repeated again and again or we can say the recent crisis which is uh, uh, really creating the problem for all kinds of stocks, it is because of, but it was not happening in the future or there was, there was no, uh, it was not happening in the past. So, if it is not happening in the past or we cannot predict that it is going to happen in the future, if you go and analyze this particular uh, stock prices in this particular period and you are predicting something about the future, then it is quite difficult to say that how this particular stock is going to perform. Then the patterns may become self-fulfilling prophecies. What does it mean? The pattern what we are observing, that may not be what we can say that uh, we can say that that reflects everything. That may be is a self-fulfilling uh, prophecies where everything is reflected already there, and that may not also suitable or suitable parameter or suitable information which can predict about the future. A successful rule will gain followers and become less successful. Once the particular rule 
or particular trend we have followed and some of the people have got the benefit out of this, then obviously once this information reaches to the market, then everybody follows that particular principle, then what will happen that finally after certain period, this rule became unsuccessful because everybody follows that. So, whole demand supply situation of this particular stock changes. If whole the demand and supply situation of that particular stock changes, then it is very difficult to use that rule again and again because it affects this particular price of that particular stock and it affects the whole demand supply situation of that particular stock. The market mechanism changes, the market dynamics changes. If the market dynamics changes, it is quite difficult to again and again use the same rule. You know the trick, you have gained something, but still again and again if you are using it and that information reaches to everybody, then what will happen that this particular rule may not be successful in the future. So, therefore, always it is preferable not to use the same rule and again and again if you want to maximize your return in a particular time. So, therefore, what we can say that we cannot say that uh, always this particular trading rule will be prevailed or will be applicable in a financial market. Then finally, also what we have observed here, the rules required a great deal of subjective judgment. Whenever we are talking about a particular stock and we observe that immediately we, this particular price adjustment is happening in the market. Uh, here what already we little bit we discussed uh, about this, that uh, it requires lot of subjective judgment and that subjective judgment is quite difficult to measure. So, once we say, okay, if the stock price is uh, behaving like this, it may uh, increase in the future. If the stock price is behaving like this, then it may decrease in the future. But how can you say so? Whenever we say these things or we conclude these things, in the backup of the mind what we feel that uh, it may happen in the future because it was following this particular trend since last 10 years or 5 years, but it may not happen. It because what decision or the judgment what we talk about, that generally already is uh, has involved this some of the subjective uh, mentality, subjective factors what I felt about this particular asset or particular stock. So, therefore, what we can say sometimes it is a great challenge to the technical analyst to use certain subjective factors which can also play the significant role, but still our judgment process should not be subjective, it should be very much quantifiable. And if the subjective factors is there, then obviously what will happen it may debit. I am not saying that there should not be any kind of subjectivity whenever the investment decision is taken, but whenever we take the decision, if you analyze this subjectivity in that context, what generally we should say that there should be some, there is a chance of deviation in that particular context. <coughs> if that deviation is there, then we can say that this particular rule always prevails in the market for the investment decision. So, in this context what you can say that uh, according to technical analysts, the stock cycles typically go through a peak and torque. So, in this context what you can say that analyze the following chart of a typical stock price cycle and we will show a rising trend channel, a flat trend channel and declining trend channel and indication of when a technical analyst would want to trade. So, you just see this example in this context. If you see here that uh, in a particular, if this is your time period and this is your stock prices and this previously what we have observed that if you start the prices from here this price there is a declining trend that is why there is a declining trend channel here. Once the prices has gone up what we have observed that there is a uh, inclining trend gradually although there is a little bit fluctuation because it is because of adjustment and the flotation costs. What we have observed there is a peak which is prevailing here and once we reach the peak maybe sometimes it can go for a flat trend channel. So, it follows a flat trend in this particular period, still there is fluctuation, but still more or less the trend is flat. And finally, whenever again we have observed that there is a declining trend and finally, it has reached the turf 
torf in this, and this is the lowest point, here this is the torf which is the lowest point and this is the maximum point which we call it the peak. Once it will reach the peak basically it follows a flat train or it may also go down immediately, but first it has gone down, but then it follows a flat train, then finally it has again gone down which follows the declining train. So, if this is your declining trend and finally, it has reached the torf, then what has happened in this context that uh, the trough again has uh, uh, gone to this, uh, here the stock price may be you can buy whenever once it is the torf because there is a chance that it will go up, but once it, it has reached in the peak, still there is there is chance that uh, you can sell the stock because immediately in that particular time we are expecting that the price may go down. And finally, what has happened that uh, we have reached this torf and this is your buying point and again once it reached the torf and again it will follow a uh, increasing trend in the uh, future. So, if you this kind of fluctuation you will observe in a particular stock market cycle, it is basically a typical stock market cycle and almost all the technical analysts believe in this philosophy and they follow this particular trend in such a manner to take their decision in the market when you should buy the stock and when we should sell the stock. In general we call it this is the concept of security analysis. So, there are various trading rules what the technicians or the technical analysts make. Uh, so, the trading rules are like this that uh, first of all the trading rule may have uh, a contrary opinion that means, we say that trading against the crowd. The concept of smart money, where we say that attempts to emulate uh, uh, a substitute investors. Then the other popular market indicators and the stock prices and volume techniques including the Doe theory. So, today we will talking about these two, then uh, uh, in the next session we will be talk about the popular market indicators or the different types of uh, tools or the instruments, what we use in the technical analysis to take the decision when you should buy and when you should sell. If you one by one if you see what basically the contrary opinion means, the contrary opinion is nothing but it basically that uh, uh, the concept or the analysis of contrary opinion basically rely on the rules developed from the premise that the majority of the investors are wrong as the market approaches peaks and tops. Technicians try to determine whether investors are strongly bullish or bearish and then trade in the opposite direction. It is a very, uh, very funny kind of philosophy what we can say or in general lighter side we can say. What generally we say here that if everybody feels that the market will go up, some of the people or the technical analyst who believes in the contrary opinions or contrary, contrarian approach, what do they do? They say that the stock price may not go up, the stock price may go down. So, that is why they take the reverse position in the market and sometimes it clicks also. So, here the contrary opinion is once they have made this uh, stock charts and from the stock charts once they have made this uh, peaks and tops. For example, now what observation what we have seen let this is your peak and finally, it has gone up and somewhere it uh, we have reached the peak, uh, this is your torp and this is your peak, then again it has gone down, maybe the, it has followed the, this kind of train in this flat train, then again it has gone down and like that it has reached the peak, then again it has increased. So, here whenever this is your uh, torp and this is your peak and this is your again torp and this is your peak like that. And here what we observe that once it will reach the top, everybody will observe that uh, it will go up, but it is not necessary that again it will go up immediately at that particular time. So, in this situation what generally the investors do, other investors do, if the market is going down, 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 they may not reflect whether it is a top or whether it is uh, uh, again it is there is a chance it will go down, but the technical analyst can believe or can uh, come to know that once it will leave the torp, maybe this another trend which is increasing trend will be followed. So, in that situation, maybe some of the investor again feel that the price will go down again 
but in this situation what these people will feel that this price will go up because already they have used the certain techniques to analyze whether there is a bullish trend or there is a bearish trend. If already there is a bearish trend we are observing, but when this bearish trend will be over that may be all the investor is not able to know. If all the investor are not able to uh, define that when this particular bullish period will be over or the bearish period will be over. So, that time they will may be misled by that and that time the contrary approach, uh, the contrary approach may be uh, used uh, or may be uh, best suited approach uh, in the investment decision making process. So, therefore, these advantages the technical analyst can take because they believe in this bars and stock market cycle and the charts diagrams and etcetera. And once they plot this particular trend after certain period of time, they can say that whether this particular price will follow increasing trend or the decreasing trend after this particular point. So, in this context what you can say, maybe other investors are misled by the trend, but still these people will not be misled because they have analyzed this uh, previous pattern and the previous pattern shows that now once it will leave the top the price will go up. So, which is judged by detected by the uh, technical analyst people, but it may not be detected by the other people. So, in that context we can say the contrarian approach followed by the technical analyst that means, if everybody believes that the price will go down, they believe the price will go up. If everybody believes that price will go up, they believe the price will go down and that also most of the time is successful in the market. That investment philosophy clicks in the market most of the time. Another approach is basically the mutual fund cash position, another indicators generally whenever we talk about the uh, contrarian approach, here some of the another indicator we say, which are the different indicators which help the technical analyst to decide whether the stock price will go up or go down. One of them is basically we say that uh, the mutual fund cash positions. So, in the mutual fund cash position what generally it happens? that the mutual funds assume to act incorrectly before a market turning point. Low liquidity implies funds fully invested that means, it is bullish and market is near or at peak. High liquidity implies funds are bearish, consider a good time to buy. It is very interesting that if you observe that uh, the mutual funds cash position is quite high, the liquidity position in the market is quite high, then what it happens that uh, now the funds are very bearish in nature that means, this is considered a good time to buy because the price may go up in the future. But the low liquidity there is cash uh, constant by the mutual funds, then obviously that time what the technical analyst believe that the market is near or at peak. So, that is the indicator of uh, the turning point that means, we refer whether the market is in the peak or it is in the top that basically sometimes the technical analyst uh, get out of the uh, mutual fund cash position in the market. So, here what we have seen that uh, mutual fund cash position is linked to the liquidity and if you see that the cash position is quite huge. So, that time what we can observe that the may be in the near future the market is going to be bearish. So, that is why they said it is better to buy the stock it is a good time to buy. So, everybody believes in that time the market is good, liquidity position is high, the market will go up, but in this context in the contrarian approach or, in, or we can the contrary uh, philo contrarian philosophy what this technical analyst use according to them what generally they say it is better that we should go and uh, uh, take this particular situation a uh, particular decision in that, at that time that situation uh, that we should. Uh, uh, by the stock, it is because that the stock price may go up. So, then another situation that uh, because uh, sometimes also the reverse situation whenever we feel that everybody feel it, believes that this is a bearish market because there is a low liquidity and uh, uh, we can say that the market is again uh, going to go, um, go up. So, it is better not to sell the stock, but that time this contrarian people believes that we should sell the stock. Then another indicator also we have or the technical analyst believe uh, the credit balances in brokerage accounts. What do you mean by the credit balances in brokerage accounts? The credit balances basically result when the investors sell the stocks and leave the proceeds with their brokers expecting to reinvest them shortly. 
once you have started the investment for example you have sold the stock and whatever money you got or whatever uh, gain you got that gain if you keep it with your broker and why you are keeping it with the broker because you are expecting that again you are going to reinvest that money in the future in a short span of time so therefore what generally we say that uh, if the technical analyst view this if this thing happens in the market technical analyst view this credit balances as potential power a decline in these balances is considered bearish because it indicates lower purchasing power as the market approaches a peak alternatively a build up of credit balances is an increase in buying power and a bullish signal that means what it's very clear if more money will be kept with the brokerage account that time what you are expecting you are expecting that again the price maybe in the near future this particular investors are ready to buy the stock and once they are ready to buy the stock what does it mean it means that the market is going to be uh, bearish that's why they are going to buy the stock and once they will going to they, they will buy the stock in the near future they can get the benefit out of this but if the more money will be kept there so in that situation we can realize this but if the less money is uh, kept there that means what we can say there is less potential about the market so that's why what generally the investors do the investors generally took their money from them they generally take out their money from the brokerage firms and once they will take out this particular money from the brokerage firms it's because there is no potential uh, in the market that the market will go up that's why there is no chance that they are they should invest in the market then another approach is our investment advisory opinions and the ratio of trading volume so here this approach what we do or the technical analysts do if a large proportion of investment advisory services are bearish this signals the approach of market turf and the onset of a bull market the ratio of trading volume is considered a measure of speculative activity sometimes it gives the opposite results so that's why what generally we say that uh, if most of the companies the, peop, the companies who gives the in investment advices or uh, investment advisory services if you find that uh, everybody believes that the market is bearish is going to be bearish the signals that uh, now the market is going to reach the top and uh, obviously there is a chance the market will go up that means in that time other people believes that the market is going to be bearish that time the, the people from the technical analysts or the people who believes in the technical analysis they feel that now there is a chance the market will go up it is better to buy the stock which can perform better in the market then another good indicator we have or the technical analyst also use that is your put call ratio and future traders bullish on stock exchange futures what it basically means that the contrary opinion technicians use put options which give the holder the right to sell stock at a specified price for a given time period as signals of a bearish attitude that means why he wanted to sell this particular stock it's because in the future the market may go down so that's why it basically talks about a bearish attitude and a higher put call ratio indicates a pervasive bearish attitude which technicians consider a bullish indicator although they believe that the higher put call ratio indicates a bearish attitude but the technicians that time they say that is a bullish indicator using their own contrary and philosophy so when the 70 percent of uh, speculators are bullish the cont the contrary opinion technicians say it is bearish market and it is a bullish signal when this declines to 30 percent so there are certain threshold marks threshold limits what they have defined so accordingly they say that uh, if you observe that there is a 70 percent uh, uh, speculator 70 percent of the speculators believe that they are bullish the contrary opinion technicians that there is going to be a bearish market and they believe it will be bullish whenever the other people will the uh, uh, sun says 30 percent they believe that the market is going to decline by the 30 percent then another concept is basically the follow the smart money what it basically means there are certain indicators we use in this context one is your confidence index 
then your T bill euro dollar yield spread or we can say the yield spread even in Indian context, the debit balances in the brokerage accounts. What basically the confidence index is? It is basically the ratio of average yield on top 10 great corporate bonds divided by the yield on stock markets average of 40 bonds. If the ratio is high, it shows the bullish sign and if it is low, it gives the bearish sign. It is very clear cut mark what they have mentioned. Then the T bill euro dollar yield spread, what it means? It measures the investor's confidence. If it declines, the stock market experiences a turf shortly thereafter. So then third one is the debit balances in brokerage accounts. Already we talked about the brokerage accounts and we, uh, other name is margin accounts. So an increase in debit balances implies buying and it is considered a bullish sign while decline in debt balances would indicate selling by the investor and would be the bearish indicator. So, these are also the indicators what we use in the market uh, to take the decision whether we should invest uh, in this stock in terms of the buying or the selling. So, here what we have observed that the technical analyst are the strong believer of uh, the uh, or we can say they are highly dependent on the past trend and they believe that the stock price reflects everything and always the trend follows a reasonably period of time and this particular trend persists for a reasonable time period. That is why what we can say that if that inertia or that particular persistence always there in the market, so we can rely that particular trend and accordingly we can take our decision in the market that way. Then another thing is what we can say that uh, whenever we talk about the market situation or we talk about the fundamental approach, it is quite difficult to go for the valuation of the particular stock because of uh, the uncertainty or the sub some of the subjective factors which are involved in this, in this particular process, but here those processes are not there. And uh, already also we have seen that the technical analysts have used uh, some of the very clear cut threshold indicators which can help us to take the decision in the market. So, in the next class we will be talking about the uh, other indicators, very popular market indicators what the technicians or the technical analysts use to take the investment decision in the market. Thank you.